down guys well it's a bit of an update as to where we are right now and what's been happening over the last weekend um, everyone would probably seen me uh, have a bit of a heated moment with uh, Guru and Craig Cole um, also probably Craig Cole as well um, yeah what that all what all of that was regarding was uh, two threatening messages that Guru sent me personally after the week before on the uh, Saturday night he sent me two threatening messages because during the day at the parliamentary lawns I went up to the A1 tent and spoke to Miguel in Spanish so no one can understand about what I'd found on the internet with the Guru Deception and Miguel said to me come and speak to Rhiannon and he could vouch for this um, so I did and I spoke to him for approximately 10-15 minutes about what I'd say and whatnot, and uh, Rhiannon pretty much implied that you know, if anyone was doing anything out toward that they'd be found out. They've said since the beginning that they're not affiliated with anyone. Uh, but I said, well, you know, you've, you've got Ricardo Bossi on, on stage. He has been endorsing Guru multiple times. Um, so, you know, and she said, yeah, and I said, all right, no worries, and I left. I left it at that. I thought I did, did what I had to do. I thought, well, they've been doing seemingly doing a lot of work, um, so um, yeah, I just wanted to yeah, just see, make sure nothing, <laughs> so I just derail that, but now I'm having second thoughts about what's actually happening on the scene there. Now, while I was there, um, and I was waiting, because what happened was after he sent me those messages, uh, I woke up on a Sunday morning, I saw those messages, um, I went to the normal Governor General's meeting in the morning, then I went to Ainsley Hill with the boys because the women were having their ceremony. And then my frustration boiled over and I thought, um, I'm going to go confront Guru, as he said in the message, um, to do. So instead of doing it in Canberra, um, in front of everyone, I thought I'd go to Wollongong, where he was on his boat, and go to it away from the cameras. And uh, so we didn't get any negative publicity. Now, he did it. I went down there. He didn't come off the boat. He didn't want to play some music. I made a video while I was down there. I put it on my own YouTube page, which doesn't have any much uh, traction. And, um, yeah, he didn't want to come on the boats. And I told him then, I said, if you're not facing music here, you're going to face some music when you come to Canberra. Uh, you won't be getting on stage. So that's the whole reason why I was, I was up on that stage and grabbed him off the stage um, was because when I made him my word, and I told him I was going to do that. Um, now, with Craig Cole, because the A1, Guru is affiliated with A1, um, Craig, uh, Ricardo Bossi, from the very beginning, mind you, which I'm going to explain a little bit more in a second. But, um, yeah, so Craig Cole, I could see him coming up because the word was going around that I was there and I was upset about Guru, so they thought I was going to do something untoward. And um, so Craig Cole slowly approached me, and we've got video footage of that. I knew exactly what he was up to, so I started filming. Adrian John Wells, pretending I was filming Adrian John Wells by the, by the bottom of the ramp. I was actually filming it because I was going to catch Craig Cole out, saying what he's saying. And, uh, you know, catch him out or not, you know, he showed his true character, what a type of bloke he is, called me a cunt, and, you know, just getting himself involved with somebody he doesn't even know about, just trying to be an enforcer, like a tough guy. And um, that's not going to work with me because um, I'll, just, I'll have a crack back, basically. And um, especially when I'm stand standing true in the conviction of my words and what's happened. And um, he didn't like that. He doesn't like anyone standing up to him. He doesn't like anyone bigger standing up to him either. He's a big bully. You can see in the video that he actually steps up on top of the, the ramp to get, you know, a higher point. Me and I didn't really care what he was doing. Um, called him out for, for things that they, they, they didn't have achieve in Melbourne, you know. So. Yeah, they got pretty heated and it was basically Craig Cole sticking up for Guru and um, mainly because they're all tied up with A1. You know, Guru gives A1 the stage. If everybody zooms out for a second, you'll see that the Saturdays in Parliament Law now are basically an A1 party. Um, you know, there's a, you know, a few people get up and speak, but it's predominantly uh, focused around A1. And uh, Ricardo, and so on. What I'm really grappling with now that Ricardo's on record at Epic endorsing one bloke for you know 
having a big part of the organisation of the role of Epic, and it wasn't Ricardo, he actually says that himself, he has no organisational role, he just comes in, the bloke just comes in and speaks. And so there's a bloke there, and yeah, that bloke's me, but the thing is that it's just I find it ironic that he'll endorse people like her after multiple, you know, even evidence of him coming out being some shady shit. I prayed Cole yesterday, or the day before, whatever, that he had an incident with me. But not only with me, but with a friend D, he was sticking out with me because his wife came over and started getting involved. Then the girls teed off on each other. Then Craig has actually put his arm across and pushed D away, and D wasn't having that, so she's pushed him back and then pushed him again, two hands, and he, he lost his balance and went over, passed over. And then he got up, and all this footage is there, we've got all the record of it, and then he's there multiple times calling her a skank, he misses it, there, copy. Stuff. And I'm just thinking, and it was literally the same day he announced he was running for the federal seat of Casey in Melbourne, Victoria. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me. How could you be acting all that one way when you're trying to gain the support of the people who get their vote and you've just physically assaulted and, and, and verbally abused a woman in front of everyone, in front of millions of people, really? It's all online. How do you think that's going to sit with the electorate? So, in my opinion, Craig Cole's political career was over before it ever started. And I pointed this out to people, I don't know if you understand politics, but what do you think the Labor, Liberal, Greens and National staffers have been instructed to do? Now, I'm a floor Sam. But if I was the boss, I'd be like, get as much dirt as you can off the internet with those guys, and a week or two weeks before we uh, go to the polls, make sure you've got it all edited up, looks fantastic, and discredit the hell out of them. And then people will be so disenfranchised of those independent parties that they'll be driven back to the majors. So, ask yourself this. Is it constructive for Ricardo Bossi to be standing on stage at Parliament Lawns, looking at AFP officers, calling them Australian effing fucking police instead of Australian federal police, and hurling, continually so hurling abuse out of He's ramped it up even more. Then you've got his endorsed candidate, Craig Cole, abusing women, physically assaulting women and abusing them. And then you've got the guy, Guru, who is organising everything for him, and he's saying that he's just great who's now been caught out, he's been caught doing some shady stuff in America, which still hasn't all come out yet. Plus he's been caught and I've got the proof of threatening me. I mean, I just don't get it. What, why would A1 continue to be pushing this sort of message? Or this sort of thing? To get people angry? I don't know. As I said to Kate Cole, he said he's down in Melbourne too. As I said, yeah, you're angry. But what did you achieve? Nothing. Dan Andrews still passed the bill. So, and I had multiple people reach out and say, we agree 100% with what you said. So you've got to ask yourself the question, ladies and gentlemen, what is it that A1 are actually proposing? What is it? I really don't see it. Who are all the candidates? What are they achieving? Since they got involved, since Ricardo's been involved from the beginning of the library with Guru, things have just gone to shit. Now, if my intuition is correct, I think Guru had a similar effect over in America, or in Canada, maybe, in Canada, with Pat King and the Canadian convoy, which we don't know a lot of details about. So, So that's why I'm not concentrating on that stuff anymore. I think enough's been said, called out and whatnot. People have to figure it out for themselves. Just like everything else we've been going on about for the last two years. And we still have a mass population that can't figure it out for themselves. So this is no different. Um, not good, but 
quite different, so you've got to figure it out. Just be a critical thinker. I'm not saying anything. I don't know any plan or anything. I'm just looking at things critically and saying, is this conducive to a um, peaceful, loving, unified movement of the people? Ah, you're disenfranchising way too many people. So, when we have a movement of the people, especially like the movement of the people like Stand in the Park, and if you know Stand in the Park, um, the UAP and One Nation political well, their strategy was for recruiting was to go and hit up all the Stand in the Parks. So the most vocal of the people were poached by UAP or One Nation, my brother included. So I'm talking on that first hand. Now, that means that any movement of grassroots movement of the people, which Stand in the Park was, was then hijacked by political parties to get the most vocal and outspoken people and bring them into the system. Now, Convoy to Canberra was a movement of the people. Nothing but the people and politicians were held out until Jim got arrested. But that's not quite exactly right because Guru was talking to Ricardo Bossi and they were talking about military stuff and all this sort of jazz and I was part of one of those meetings. So there was a perceived perception that we were under attack. Now, we we're under surveillance, but I don't think we we're under attack. It's a difference. The walkthroughs was more of a surveillance technique, but then they antagonised because they knew they were going to get a reaction. So all that stuff was planned, but really we were being surveilled. Now, when we got kicked out of there, we ended up going to Epic. Jim was arrested. Jim's truck was taken out of the ACT so that he was able to drive afterwards so that they wouldn't take him because he was his home. So then he camped on that because he's his home. He was offside. Guru took the opportunity while I was at Epic, and I was a massive part of this because I was getting instructed to do this, to do that, run down like a little lucky. And after a few days, I started, it started wearing very, very thin to me. And then I just started more so taking control of the situation and not listening too much to what Guru had to say because God knows what he was doing. They think they were doing his high-end meetings, which they didn't achieve anything. They actually achieved, uh, they were counterproductive because they just divided everyone. And then I had one meeting with Guru and Ricardo Bossi in the caravan. That was the, 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 the afternoon before Ricardo made the announcement of me in front of everyone the next morning. But that afternoon, because of the, what transpired the night before, the amount of uh, police and AFP and undercover were coming in and we were kicking them out. And I'm not too sure how Miguel and two other brothers ended up there, come down to suss out what was going on. They found me. I said the boss sent us down to see what was going on. I said, what do you mean what's going on? I said, we're getting infiltrated by AFP, Freemasons, you name it. They kind of trying to stir the pot. But the boys and us, we all, we all got, you know, we were, it was great. There was so many guys and people that were just running security were all over the park. You had the bottom crew, you had the top crew. Sydney Sam was running up there, Big Kev and all those guys. So, you know, then that, that morning, that, that afternoon, was it the, the next afternoon, Ricardo came into the caravan with, and, uh, and said, it's all, what, what, what's, you know, what care we help? And I said, well, I don't understand why. I said, well, what I'm saying is in this box up the top, there's this little box with you, Woody, Lada, Kozak, Craig Kelly, coming off the side. And I said, this is doing nothing, really. You're getting your photo opportunity going. So why aren't you building camps? Why aren't you instructing people to build camps? Because we had the, the intel from the Zello apps that there was waves and waves of people and the, the, the big arrival hadn't come yet. So I'm like, we need to scale up the camps so we can accommodate all these people and bunker down. And, and he's like, all right, so Ricardo's like, okay. And then the next morning he made that announcement. But before he made that announcement, he came out with a truck driver out of a flatbed truck and said, Johnny Hughes, such and such, you got a flatbed truck, help you out, said no worries, cheers, never saw the bloke again, and then he made that announcement, and then, um, they were all getting very, very coordinated, but I said, as I said to myself, you guys are all in this box, I said, you're all sort of leading people here, one way or another, I said, why aren't you building camps, I said, you've got 50, 60 people around you every morning when you come here, I've got the photos that you're sitting behind my ute, um, talking to people, why aren't you instructed to do this, so it's just, and for months now, it's been the same rhetoric with Ricardo, and I just, 
I get you're going to push the message, but you know the timing there was there was time for unification and, and there was a missed opportunity. I said, look, you guys are in that small box. And I said that there's a massive box underneath you that all the people are organising and volunteering and getting this done. So there wasn't any leadership. I wasn't a self-appointed leader either. I was a bit of conduit more than anything. Because people, well, because I rolled up my sleeves early from the library and just started helping out, and you get to know people, and then people see you doing that, and you constantly then you leave. So the longer you're there, the more you work, the more you get the people to help, and then people come to you for help, and then when you help them, they'll go and say, I'll go, they go, I'll go now and pass that guy. So you build social collateral that way. So I built a lot of social collateral within Epic very, very quickly. Um, and a lot of people can be you know, to attest to that. So, but what Ricardo said was 100% correct. I didn't have any agenda apart from, you know, the people and just getting it solid so we could just have something amazing, which it was. <coughs> but it could have been a lot better if we had the leaders coordinating, um, coordinate, coordinating everybody. But they didn't because they couldn't agree on themselves and the egos got in the way. So I'm just, you know, wondering that, uh, and we said that at Epic, I'm just fleshing that in my mind now, that we said that if ego was that way, we would go that way. So, you know, if we're still dealing with ego, what the hell are we doing? You know, we shouldn't be going that way, we should be going in a completely different direction, which is why I'm going a different direction. And uh, communicating, you know, a lot, and as much as I can, with uh, all the sovereign uh, mobs and, you know, sort of groups that are, uh, have got some, uh, some movements going and have got some traction. Um, to try and align or see where they're going, just to try and be a bit of conduit for them, as a white fella, because they, uh, because I know I've got my head around what's going on with the white fella side. I've got a mind map that I connected all the dots with everyone, but you know, all everyone was connected with uh, with Epic, and, you know, they took money and rods and all that sort of stuff. Got it all down. But what I don't have is uh, you know the sovereign side of stuff, which I'm sort of piecing together. It takes a long time. You got to understand. You can't, you can't help someone if you don't understand where they're coming from. So that's sort of a lot. Basically what I'm doing is just doing empathy research with them um, to see where they come, what all the different angles they're coming from and see where there might be connections where they can have some uh, common ground just to unify for a common cause for a time being and then um, you know, to achieve a goal and then to, um, and then to go back to the self-governing structure which is, is critical. It's critical in, in that society. It's needed. It's needed in our society. People don't understand it yet, but there's a good reason why mobs uh, don't really collectively sort of agree on everything, and it's, it's literally ingrained in them because um, and it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's literally um, an organic anti-corruption uh, mechanism within all the nations because if you have one nation that becomes corrupted and they don't get along with the other one, the other one's not going to get corrupted. Think about that for a second. So you've got 369, to say, for argument's sake, nations. You might have one or two corrupted or ten, but they're not going to corrupt, corrupt the rest of them. Now, look at the system we're living in, in the Western system. We live in a society which is a hierarchical structure that comes from the prime ministership there. So, if it's tainted from the top, it trickles down. As we say on the rigs, shit runs downhill. So, there's a lot to learn from law that um, can actually help our Western society and the systems that we live under to solve some of the problems that we keep facing, that, we, that people just keep going around in circles with, because the same people can put themselves into power and protect themselves. So, I think a lot needs to be learned from that system, and I think a hybrid system down the track is probably going to be something that's going to be seriously looked at and worked on. Um, and through certain techniques um, like uh, the design, uh, innovation design framework, which is a really good tool to use as a collective uh, resource to, you know, to, to come up with solutions for, for big, big issues. Um, and I've done that before, I've done it at university, I've learned all about it, so I'm happy to share that knowledge and see what I'm, I'm sure there's thousands of other people know what I'm talking about. That, um, you know, if they make the connect the dots and say, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, we can probably do something like this. Because um, the only way forward, really, I mean, it's a, it's a fail-safe way, that's what it teaches in uni, that, you know, if you follow this process, that uh, you'll come up with a product that is a success. So, it's a bit of a no-brainer, so, well, why aren't we doing it? Um, and I think the reason why we aren't doing it is just not enough people know about it. And 
that's what all this connection movement going around, telling people, talking to people, uh, and seeing where they're at, and seeing where they can, where it all fits together. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. Um, but there's, there's a lot of people working, figuring out the pieces. Uh, it's just good. It's just heartening. And so I think the biggest thing that the government doesn't want to see is the unification between the white fellas and the black fellas in this country en masse. En masse is going to be big change, big, big change. And not so much as in um, physical structures change, but um, the system of governance within our society, more of a community governance structure, um, a grassroots structure than a top-down approach, because then we can actually probably mitigate corruption better, as in what the mobs do, now that I think about it. So, yeah, food for thought there, people. Uh, critically think of what's going on. Um, have a little bit of a think about, I'm going to put something together when I get time with uh, Bossy and, and all the crew and see what and how my story's evolved. Uh, being held to account by certain people, and you'll see that um, I've always acted in good faith, but I have been made to look uh, bad, you know, to suit their agendas. Don't forget that bit. Because it's water off a duck's back for me. I don't care about what's said about me and whatnot, because I know in my heart that I'm doing the right thing, and I have been. A lot of people know that, so I've got nothing to worry about. So negative stuff, whatever, publicity, good. You know, get my profile out there, great. That I can, when people see me for real, I'll push my, the real message, you know. So, I'm on my way to see Buddy Shillingsworth now in uh, Sydney and uh, also Nayara, so hopefully uh, we get some more stuff done and you know, move further, further forward. And then I'll be coming back to Canberra, uh, hooking up with Johnny Canton, Australian Council Government Watch. We're going to do some stuff at the end of the week, some big stuff happening there with the Governor General and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, it should be. Fun and games. Alright, we'll do another update shortly.